Hi everybody, this is Rusty Dog. Now, as you can maybe guess from the start of the video, um, it's not been a good week for me. I lost a very dear friend this week, uh, somebody I'd known for about 30 years, somebody I could always turn to for advice and for help, and somebody was always there. Somebody I would class as a, a proper friend, you know? You're, you're close friends. And so I have named my python after her. Um, so now the python is the Mary Callahan. And uh, the call sign of the ship is Trary, which is what she was known to or known as by her late husband. Um, so, yeah. This sh ship is going to be a kind of permanent uh, tribute to her. And the reason I picked the Python is because strictly it's not a combat ship. I was determined that it wasn't going to be a combat ship. Um, but Mary was the kind of person who was always into the, the you know the, the the sciences and stuff like that. Didn't tolerate. Uh, any superstitious BS from anywhere so right up my alley if if you know <laughs> yeah right up my alley and she was very much into Carl Sagan and you know all the, the universe stuff like like I am um, and so I thought that she might like to have this ship named after her and it's a multi-purpose ship um, I could definitely say she was multi-purpose and it can defend, she can defend herself if she needs to. So pretty appropriate, I thought. Um, and I've recolored it in white. I wasn't, I wasn't really sure which color to go with, but for this, for the purpose of this video, um, it's certainly going to be a white ship. It might not stay that way, but I think for the purpose of this video, I'm going to... Uh, I think white would be um, probably a better option, although you I, you can go with any color really. So what's the, what's the deal today? Well, this is something completely different, and I'm going to attempt to show you how to do something that I barely know how to do myself. Um, and this will be my first proper try. So if I can do this, then you guys should be able to do it. If you have Photoshop or you know, maybe something similar, but I'll be showing you in Photoshop. So we're going to be doing what is called a 3D pop-out. Um, some of you might know what that is. And I'm going to, I'm sure there's going to be people out there who know Photoshop far better than I do. Um, and could probably do a better job with better techniques. That's fine. Go and do your thing. And in fact, if you guys want to have a go at this... Um, maybe upload your image to is it imgur imgur dot com just upload it there and leave a link in the comments and let me see your um your results and perhaps on another video or perhaps even on the live stream uh we can show some i'm getting a bit ambitious now because uh, i don't even know if i'm going to complete this myself so what i want to do uh let me just show you the photoshop image I'm using an iPhone 8 here in Photoshop and I want to have the Python either going into or coming out of the phone, popping out of it. Now, I have an idea in my head. Originally I wanted the ship coming out because you think, well, you know, you want to see the ship coming out and it's, it's kind of as if it's coming out of the screen. But then I had an idea about why not have it going into the screen and there being like a, an icy has res in here and have it opening fire on a ship that it's trying to um, take down. Uh, now I know it's, that's combat, but it's not strictly combat, it's just for the video purposes. Um, because, you know, the Python, although it can be used for combat, I strictly don't use it for that. It is a multi-purpose ship, and I use it for for multi-purpose things. Uh, and sometimes, if it's carrying cargo, 
it needs to defend itself. So in this case though I don't think it's going to be a problem for me to just open fire. Hopefully I won't cause any friendly fire. Um, and then I want to have the ship that I'm shooting on in the background with with, uh, let's have a look, see if I can get my cursor here. Do I get it here? Yeah. So I want to have uh, the Python coming into he into the phone uh, and then the other ship inside the phone with the Hasres, the icy Hasres inside. That's my vision. Turning that into an image. Hmm. So I acquired this image um, online. Uh, if I've still got the link, <laughs> I will leave a link. Uh, in the video description. If I don't have the Google link, um, then I'll upload it onto Imgur and I will provide a link for that. So I will provide a link to this. There are many other images you can use. You can even capture your own image of yourself holding your own phone. Uh, it doesn't have to be an iPhone. A Samsung will work. <laughs> what a stupid thing to say. Okay, so to get started then, we're going to need to uh, to get the ship down to a has res with icy rings. Uh, I, I want icy rings personally. It doesn't have to be. You can do what you like. You can have, uh, you can have, for example, maybe pretend this Python is an SRV, for example, okay? And you could just um, say bring it down to ground level. So you've got, imagine we're at an SRV on a planet surface and you could have the ground on a on a iPhone that's been photographed on a table for example so it's flat and you could put the ground on the screen and then the space bit and the ship would pop out but you need to you need to do this you need to bring it out like that so that you've got space either side and it looks like the ship or the SRV is popping out of the top of the iPhone you'll get the idea if you look at if you Google 3D pop out, you'll you'll get the idea of exactly uh, what I mean. So, I'm going to nip off to Timbaldaris or Timbalderis. Uh, I believe the final planet um, in that system has icy rings. Whether it does or does not have a resource extraction site, I don't know. It doesn't have to have. I suppose I could just go straight between the the ice rocks. But the idea for the idea for this is to have another ship uh, that I'm pretending to fire on. So, let's get going, and I'll be back when I'm there. Right. So, Timbaldaris didn't have what we wanted. So I'm here at ER8. This is planet number one and it has a hazardous res site on the B-ring which is icy. And we're in luck because it's lit up, it's not in the dark. So we'll pop in. <coughs> uh, that's just perfect. Now I don't need to have the planet facing me but I think it would be cool if it was. And I also need to make sure... Oh, well let's see. There it is. <laughs> I knew I'd find the planet at some point. So we're not actually going to attack anybody. But I need to get close to a ship. And this is going to be a bit tricky. Because the screen, if I get close to a ship, it, I guess... It can't be a, a ship that's mining that we're going to be shooting at. Because that just wouldn't be right. So if we look at, say, a gunship... Uh, yeah, let's have a look at this bandit. The thing is with the bandit is it takes us away from the angle we want to be at, but we can put our ship there, I suppose. Now he's scanning me, so this is perfect. So if I nip outside and position myself like so, there's the ship. I didn't have my weapons out. Aha, we have engaged in combat. So I just need to get a screenshot here. Uh, 
I think that's it. I think that's enough. I I took several screenshots there. I took quite a few. This scenery is awesome, isn't it? Beautiful. So we're going to leave now before this thing kills us. So it was important for me to equip the the ship with um, pulse lasers or to have the ship with pulse lasers. I mean, it, it already had it, which was a bonus because then I can include laser fire. Hopefully I've got a screenshot without laser fire as well. So we're just going to leave here. And we'll just let ourselves drift away a little bit. A fair bit. At least more than a megameter away. There we go. Now we can drop the engines and we can drop out of Super Cruise. And we can drop out of the game. I think we're done here. I'm going to leave the ship here just in case we haven't got the screenshot that we want. So what I'm going to do now is transfer over to Photoshop and see if we've got anything that's usable. I did have a thought in my mind about taking a high-res screenshot because it might have been a bit better in terms of detail but obviously um, that would have meant two key presses so I it was a bit of a faff I think I think it's enough to do um, with the size I have which is uh, 2560 by 1440 so I think that should be enough so let's see if we got anything good and I've just realized I have the engines on so masking out those engine flames is going to be a bloody nightmare <laughs> I do I do make it difficult okay so I'll be back when we're in Photoshop with a decent image okay so these are the screenshots that we got <clears throat> and I think we've taken about 12 of them so if we just if we just whiz through them let's have a look so we've got one with uh, one laser firing and a little bit of engine engine um, I don't know jet f cone <laughs> and as you can see we have a shot here this is not the only shot that does this where the returning fire goes through the ship that one gives an, a nice uh, lens flare effect so and then it goes back to that now you don't have to have it with laser fire in fact you could put laser fire in afterwards you could use a shot like this and then put the laser fire in afterwards because the shields clearly look like they're getting um, pounded there and that's a nice shot of, of my ship as well see how the lighting changes very quickly from shot to shot this is a nice one um, and keep cycling through that's okay that's okay that's only got one laser though and I do have three that's a nice shot 31 I like that one and then we got this one where I've got it looks like two of my lasers are firing uh, we got some return fire but again we've got a laser coming out the back of the ship now we can remove that um, but I'm, I quite like this shot. Uh, the only thing that concerns me is the smoke trail. But that shouldn't be a problem. And I'm just looking at this compared with the angle of the phone. Although it's not really a bigger deal because we can rotate. But if you look at the angle of the phone and you picture the python going in there, it looks like... Uh, let me just see. Mm. Yeah, because of the angle where the ship is, well, we'll have to see if we can make it fit. <coughs> okay, so this is my image viewer, by the way, is Fast Stone Image Viewer. Fast Stone, one word. Uh, I, I use it for everything because it tells me all sorts of great details. Because it tells me all sorts of great details. Now... Let's go and edit with external program. We'll choose Photoshop. And that brings it straight into Photoshop, which already done that actually. So let's just transition over. Okay. So this is the part that scares me because this is a bit I don't know what to do. 
<laughs> Actually, this is not how I wants, wanted to do this. Uh, I wanted to do... What you should do, really, is go File, and then um, Place Embedded, and load it in that way. But I've done it this way, so let's just copy it, and paste it as a new layer here. All right. <coughs> So it is a bit smaller than the actual image, but we should be okay. Now then, let's just reduce the opacity of this so we can see. Hmm, not quite. I'm not quite okay with this. I'm going to just duplicate the phone layer a second, and I'm going to hide this. And I'm going to use the. I think the pen tool is would be appropriate here. And we're going to. Um, We're going to just mask out this area here because I don't really need to see it anymore. Okay. So we've got that. And we can do make selection. And mask. Right. <coughs> Now with that mask, I'm going to pick the brush and just make it a bit bigger. And if I'm not mistaken, yep. Okay, I want to get it black. <laughs> okay, so we're just going to paint this out. All right, that's better. I am going to make mistakes along my journey, believe me, I'll make plenty of them. Now then, let's reduce the opacity again. Uh, oops, not even selecting the right layer. What I want to do is place this um, I like the fact that we've got a, a couple of uh, asteroids in there. I think that looks good. <clears throat> yeah, 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 yeah. I like this. Okay, so now we need to cut out the ship and also... I don't think we need to go as far as cutting this out because it's all going to be part of the scene. I would think, I mean, I would think I could just cut out the bit that's going to be popped out. Hmm. Okay, so I just want to cut out the python, leave this where it is. And so that means bringing the opacity back up. Okay, now the best way to cut this out, if you have the time, is with the pen tool because you can make uh, curves and stuff like that but I'm going to have to use a different method and I'm going to try oops the wrong thing uh, I'm going to try the quick selection tool and see if that works <laughs> it's great when you can teach and you go yeah let's let's see if this works um, in fact, let's try something that's really cool in Photoshop. Go to select and pick any any selection tool, cut quick selection, magic wand, whatever. Now you've got select subject, but don't do that. Go to select and mask. Oh, this is the wrong layer. Why are you doing that then? Select and mask, select subject, but why is it doing it? Oh, there we go. All right. <clears throat> so it selected the ship really well. The problem is it's missed out the laser and also this background, but we can we can face that in nicely. And it's missed out some bits here. So I'm going to just 
blur the edges a little bit and I don't know if we can shift that edge. Some of the details that are gone we can we can put them back. So I'm not really I'm not really fussed about that. Uh, but if we shift the edge up, I think that looks better. Not, not too sure about this, but I think it's okay. So we can feather. It's all it's okay to get a bit of uh, blurriness around it because we can fix that with contrast, as you can see. <coughs> and maybe a bit of smoothing wouldn't go amiss. Let's have a look at decontaminate colors. Not really making that much of a difference. Okay. Ideally as well, what you want to do is have the lighting on the ship match what's outside here, not what's going on in there. So let's click on OK. This is a different method that I normally would use. Uh, so we just I've just clicked this down here to make a layer mask. OK. And then I'm going to now select... We will draw the ship in a bit later, but I'm just going to select this. And actually I need that. I need that layer mask. I'm going to copy this. I'm going to make a copy of this. And I'm going to hold the Alt key and I'm going to drag this layer mask up to there. OK. <laughs> so now we've got a layer mask on that one. So that's looking OK. We've got some bleed over here, but we'll get rid of that. Uh, and in fact, if we select the layer and select... Uh, actually, we want to be inversing that, I think. Whoops, 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 whoops. I'm in the wrong tool. I want to be on the brush. And I think... I don't know if it'll let me do this. No, not really. Let me just take a look at this layer. Oh. So it's Alt and click. Yeah, so I made a mistake there. So let's get rid of that. And what we can do... <coughs> Right. Okay, so what we need to do is be on this layer, the layer that has the uh, this the ship and the asteroid and stuff. If it's an asteroid or not, it doesn't matter. That's not the point. So we need to be in here and we need to have this layer selected. And now we can just take that away. Because I'm using black. Black takes away and white brings back. So... Here then, on the ship, <coughs> I should be able I just want to bring back what's going on here. And then we can take a look. Let's take a look at the uh, Actually, I'm not sure that we can take a look at it without the <coughs> Without the um, yeah, without the layer mask. Whoa. Okay, I just got a subscription. <laughs> okay, so I don't know who it was though. I don't think there's anything else missing. The only thing that's bothering me is these black, um, this black outline here. <laughs> so I'm going to I'm going to zoom in here. And I'm going to use white. No, I think I would use black, to be honest. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay, it is. It's white then. So white. Ah! See? Totally amateur. I need to be on this layer. You see, I was right. Black takes away. So yeah, make sure you have the mask selected, not the bloody image. Right. 
Oops. Uh, I've got the flow set pretty high. I'm going to reduce that down. And I think it would be nice if I was able to ensure to preserve these edges, but I can't. I'm thinking now perhaps that the ship should have been a smart object and that way I could have altered the uh, the edge. Now masking off this uh, engine looks like it's going to be tricky. I really don't know. Okay, let's just wipe this out. We'll just keep resizing the brush. <laughs> I don't know why this is happening. On on my uh on my uh what do you call it? My <clears throat> my normal elite videos that I'm running like this, I don't have the um the Streamlabs stuff on it, so I don't know why it's letting me know about the subscriptions. But I know that I'm edging towards 3200, which is really, really incredible. And kind of a sense of pride for me, I guess, that I've, I've even managed anywhere near that. Okay. But it's quite humbling sometimes when I think that there's 3,200 people out there that want to watch my content. Well, here's something different today. Now, there is an option called Refine Edge, but I'm not quite sure. Oh, this is going to work. I'm not quite sure how good that is either. We want to get rid of this. See, I want to, I want to retain the red, but I need to get rid of this bright edge as well. Of course, we can we can refine that. I, I guess <clears throat> I'm no Photoshop expert, as you probably uh, gathered. So I don't know whether we need the shadow, the shadow of the python in, uh, near the hand. Uh, let me just go back to the brush because clearly I've missed some parts out here. Oh, here's a little tip. Whenever you select the brush, if you ever see it across so you can't resize and you wonder what that is, because that's happened to me a few times, it's because your caps lock is on. So just press your caps lock. And you'll be fine. Okay, let's have a look at the mask. And see if we've... We just need... I'll just do it here in the mask and... Uh, get rid of it that way. We've got a little bit of fringing up here. Now, I don't know whether what I'm about to do is going to work. <clears throat> I do apologise for not being... Um, the Photoshop god. But we have a thing when we select called Refine Edge, but I don't know whether I can use that now. Probably not. No. Okay, I think that's the wrong layer mask. Oh, actually, no, it's not. <coughs> So I've got this edge here, which looks a little bit cartoony. Um, which I guess I could blur out. I probably could have done a better job before when I was doing the uh, 
the smoothing and the feathering. I probably could have done a better job there. Oops, I'm not in the brush again. Just want it. But you guys get the idea of what I'm trying to do, right? You can see what the goal here is. It's quite a lot of um, horrible blackness around there. Doesn't make it look right. I'm going to go inside the red flame just so that we get rid of okay I'm just going to go over that one more time so yeah these edges could have been a bit smoother maybe maybe here we can refine that let's have a look i'm going to go into the blur and i'm going to make the strength something like about 25. i don't know whether this is going to make a difference here let's find out up here Maybe I should be doing it on the on the layer here. I just want it nice and smooth so it's not such a sharp. Anyway. This is probably the worst. Actually, no, it's not. <clears throat> I was gonna say this is probably the worst tutorial on Photoshop on the web, but it's not because I'm actually at least letting you go see and talk and tell you what I'm doing, even if it's wrong, because I've seen so many tutorials that people like to call tutorials, um, when in fact they're not. They're just, it's well, they are, but it's just set to music, you know, and there's no talking. So I'm going to pop into Curves, and I'm going to press this, which means that the effect of this, these curves are only going to affect the layer underneath. And now I'm going to wonder why my curves box is <laughs> so small. There we go. All right, so I'm going to start here and just see, ah, uh, we need to probably copy this. So let's take this off. Yeah, I don't, right, I could, I could, okay, 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 I know how to get around this. So I'm just going to delete the layer for the moment. And I'm going to take these two. And I'm going to right click and group. I'll just call it group one. Control G, I think, would have done that. And now we can go to curves and tell it to select just the one below. And yeah, it should just affect that. <clears throat> so I just want to fetch up this maybe. Let's have a look. Don't want to go too far. I don't want to make it look too. I'm not overly familiar with curves, but by experimentation, all I do know is that this is the input channel and this is the no this is the output channel this is the input okay and maybe something like that to be honest we could probably be doing with having the the ship a bit brighter uh, and that's that is possible because in this group you have a mask of the ship, so you could put a curve in between there and just change the brightness of the ship. But don't forget, it's only going to change like this section. If you look at this uh, layer here, it doesn't, is that all the ship? Oh, it might be. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> well, anyway. Despite the fact that my, um, you know, that my Photoshop skills 
or my teaching skills, let's say, are very limited. I've managed to get through this. I'm going to try something. I'm going to try something a bit different here. So let's go to filter, render. Oh, I need a new layer, I think. Filter render. Lens flare. The selected area is empty. Indeed it is. And then I'm going to remove it. Please don't please don't comment and criticize and say, you know, this is a tutorial or you're very, you're crap at this. I already know. You're not going to tell me anything I don't already know. I'm not putting this out and saying, Hi, welcome to Photoshop. This is a new tutorial. This is just something that I wanted to do uh, in Photoshop. And I was able to, hopefully able to try and do it on the air, as it were. So let's go to Lens Flare. Yeah, 105 mil. I don't even think. I'm not really into the. Uh, okay. Jeez, I didn't want all the lens effects. So I think it's not multiply. It's either overlay or screen. It's not that. My screen there. So screen it is. Hmm. I'm not sure about this. It does bring lens effects out of the screen as well. Don't worry about that edge. We can we can get rid of that. The idea was just to uh, brighten up the the ship. I think I'm going to not bother with that though. Well, there you have it anyway. I'll leave it like that. Uh, and what I'll do <clears throat> offline is I will try and figure out how to. Let me have a look at this. Maybe we can do something here. Can I double click this and make a selection? Ah, I've double clicked the layer. Here we go. Let's feather this. Yes, 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 yes. This is what I want. Let's bring it over here. <clears throat> so, clicking on the layer mask here, double clicking on the layer mask, and we're just using feather. And all I want to do is essentially try and blur or get rid of those black, what look like outlines. Now they're starting to blur. Hmm. Refine. Aha. Now we can shift edge, I think. The problem with shifting the edge is it does get rid of it, but then it takes that away. <clears throat> but that's okay because we can put that back. So I think what that's done is it's refined the layer mask. Hold on, just bring that back a sec. Okay, that's no good. Right. So if we pick a white brush and we zoom in to... Well, we've lost a bit here, but I think that was inevitable due to the way things were on, that pic on the picture. But anyway, so if we pick a white brush, the hope here now, whoops, wrong way, is that we can restore this back in. I don't like the way it's lost detail there either. Not a big fan of that. Um, okay. 
I should have taken another copy of this, I think. Let's go outside the ship, because it's probably easier. And here as well, we'll just paint that in. And let's have a look here, see what we got. You see, we have the whiteness from space. And I, don't, I don't really want that. <coughs> so press X then to change the brush black. Then we can start painting out. Now obviously this takes a little bit of time. And it involves probably zooming in, resizing brushes, a lot better than what I'm doing, but I'm just going to do this fairly quickly for the purpose of the video. Okay. So you get the idea and just masking that off. And then just... I really don't want that. And I'm going to have to use my imagination here on what this is. Because I should have taken another layer of this. There we go. The python kind of bends around like that. And then we've got the flame, which this is the difficult part. We, we can just, I guess we can just, uh, what's going on here then? What's going on there that I can't get rid of that? That's bizarre. I'm constantly either painting in or painting out. I'm kind of bemused about this, this bit here. Okay, let's see if we can, it won't erase, but I don't think it's part of the, oh it is, it is, it's the guy's thumb. Idiot. <laughs> I knew it was something, sorry. Okay, so that means that's going to blend in fairly nicely then. Okay, now this one is a little bit trickier because I don't want this in, but I want the, fl the ship flame in. So, I already have, I don't want, uh, the hardness is already down to zero, and the flow is at 43, so let's reduce it a little bit more. And, I don't know whether increasing the smoothing is going to help. As I do more of these, they're not all going to be Elite Dangerous related, but as I do more, I'll become more proficient. And then maybe I'll put out another video and say, right guys, this is what you do. You click this, you do that, you press the other, and you're away. But until such time, <laughs> I'm kind of stuck with a little bit of guesswork. I've watched a few tutorials on how to do the 3D pop-out, but a couple of them do approach them from slightly different ways. And so I just memorize the basics, essentially, and uh, allowed that to be enough. <laughs> and it's not really. I mean, nobody, none of the tutorials use the select and mask uh, and select subject. None of them use that. So this needs, this does need refining here. We need to bring, oh, I've done that. I pressed Z instead of X. So we need to, we need to bring details in here and then remove, remove the black from there. Could probably do with zooming in really. I don't mind if it creates a little bit of a shadowy look, that's okay. Uh, uh, so let's just take away, oh, one day I'll press the white buttons.
Just want to find that. Okay, let's take a look. Um, you could do a shadow of the Python, but if you'd want it on the guy's hand only, you'd need to create a separate mask. If we just take all this off, you'd need, you, I'd need to mask out the hand from this. I might be mistaken, but I don't think I need this, this here. Um, right, this layer mask is the same as this one. I'm going to delete this one because, oh, I do need it. Okay. Yeah, I do need it. Let's put it back. Trying to think how to get the shadow there then. I suppose I could add to this mask. Let me take a look at this. Okay, so that's just the screen. Hmm. Yeah, the more I go on with this, the more um, uninformed I'm going to look. So this under here, that is his thumb. It just happens to be his thumb. So what we can do under he on his thumb is use a blur tool. And I think I'm just going to blur it a little. Uh, or is it, do I need to do it on the background? Because I think I've got a mask underneath there that's stopping me doing that. Yeah, there we go. That's better. And on the ship itself, here, just going to, just going to, Blur around these edges just a little. It doesn't have to be pin sharp. Because there is a little bit of depth of field going on on this image. I don't feel like I need to reproduce it, but yeah. Anyway. There we go. That is a 3D pop-out. There's other things you can do, changing lighting and stuff like that, but um, I'm going to leave that for another time. There you go. 3D pop-out. Python going into phone. I, 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 my original idea was having the Corvette coming out of the phone, um, but there are other examples that you can use where you would have the phone f on a flat surface and then you could have something popping up off it. Um, let me see if I can get an example of that. Okay, so if we look <coughs> at some examples here. So this, for example, where the sheep is um, here. <coughs> if you can imagine this is a planet surface. Let me just click on this. So imagine this is a planet surface and you've got your SRV or your ship landed and you could just, you know, have your SRV or your ship popping up off the phone, you know, in big, like the SRV covering most of the ground. Um, you could have something like this. Uh, you either take this image yourself of your phone or you can get, you can go online and just Google uh, iPhone or Samsung or whatever you want to do. Um, so there's various different examples of how to do 3D pop-outs, even like this, why not? It depends, you know, and you can do it with photographs. Um, I do prefer the phone thing because it looks cool, but this, like something like this looks really, really good. This is just a standard photo with everything um, being cut out around it and just basically put on two a sheet of photographic paper. So if you want <coughs> ideas for 3D pop out, check this one out, look at this. Then just go to Google and have a look at the um, examples. And I'm sure you can agree some of these look incredible. 
I love this technique. I think it looks amazing. Uh, little application of depth of field there. A little bit too much, I think, at the back, but that's okay. And it just, it's, it's a very simple effect to do. But the end result, I think, is pretty stunning. That's an excellent one. You see, and then you just add kind of effects around the outside as well. You see, so you go from this to this. Or you can go nuts and do it on your TV screen or your monitor. Why not? Why not? Just there's no limit to creativity when it comes to something like this. See, to me, this doesn't look as effective because it does look like the woman is just sat on a big photograph. It doesn't quite have that effect. That one's, again, it looks like she's just sat on a piece of paper. This is why I prefer the iPhone, iPad um, method. Mm, yeah. It doesn't quite have that same thing, but this there's plenty of these tutorials on YouTube, so you don't have to watch mine. I just wanted to show you um, me doing one, which was related to Elite Dangerous. Um, but certainly you don't have to to take mine as an example and dropping these shadows down like this isn't Too much of a big issue. I made it a hassle of mine. I didn't bother doing it because it looked like I'd selected um, I didn't I didn't make I should have made a separate layer masks uh, In places I should have not separate layer masks a separate layer. I mean look this is fantastic how cool is that? And a lot of um, times this image of the flat iPhone is used. So you can find that image. You see it's it's used quite repeatedly on a number of occasions. But you can find this image of the blank phone on Google. Look. Now I could have showed you these at the beginning, but I prefer to keep it <laughs> till the end. <coughs> just in case you weren't sure what it was about. Not quite sure why he would just be walking in the sea. And you can add, look, they've added birds around here. So on mine, um, where are we? On mine, I could have added another ship out here, but then it would have meant masking it off, stuff like that. But there's nothing to stop me adding another, like, a, you know, a vulture or something out here properly masked off so it looks like there's another ship going in from an, from another angle and I could even have added um, oh wait a minute let's see if I can do this I don't know if I can hmm I don't know whether this is going to depend uh, now then no I was I'm thinking of uh, motion blur but I Let me just pop this right up. I just wanted to see what it was affecting. Um, I see you need to affect, yeah, a little bit of motion blur, but again, just gonna pop it up here. Right, you see, so you'd need to apply the same effect to both layers like that. Uh, and the angle, I'm guessing it's probably going to be that way. Uh, the sh I'm trying to match the angle of the ship. Would that be the way? Let me just rotate that 180. Not making. <laughs> it's not making a whole lot of sense to me which way it's going. It's actually going. And we don't need. We don't need to reduce it that much. I mean, we don't need to have it that much. We can reduce it a little bit. Maybe just a tiny, tiny bit. Because the ship's in motion. Let's give it a try. We can always undo. So we've got 21 there. Okay. And then let's just go to here. And go to filter blur. And motion blur. And use the same angle. Yeah, 21. The problem is it's done it to this as well. Uh, so you would need maybe another layer where where you would do that on. 
and then you would mask this off so it, this doesn't get affected because I don't want this screen affected I just want it on the Python anyway that doesn't look too bad to be honest but I'll, I'll, I'll keep it without okay I don't want to take up any more of your time so I will um, say goodbye for now and I'll catch you next time bye bye